Hello everyone, we are live again for another episode of the Tabletop Games blog Play With Me live stream on Twitch. Today we're playing Scythe. My name is Oliver and as always I've got obviously other people playing with me and today you will hear someone who is probably very familiar to you. It's Tom. Hello Tom. Hello. How are you today? Yeah, not too bad, thank you. Yeah, first time on Tabletopia, so this is going to be interesting. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's going to be exciting. So um, we'll see uh, see how we get on with this. Apparently, we are going to be re-streamed on the Tabletopia Twitch stream as well. So we'll we'll see how that goes and um, see whether that maybe gets us people coming to the chat as well. So if you want to talk to us, join us in the chat. I don't at the moment know who is there or who isn't there, but uh, we will see. Right. Um, yeah, what I think we should do is probably actually switch to the game screen itself so you can see what it all looks like so tabletopia is well what they call a sandbox environment so you can literally just drag stuff around so like a physics engine so you get all the tokens there and it basically doesn't know anything about the rules you can drag stuff and do stuff whichever way you want or you can actually play the game by the rules so we have to sort of rely on each other to follow the rules and do it correctly unlike the sort of yakata streams we had before where you know the the game itself knows the rules and doesn't let you do things that you can't do. But I think we should be right. So, but yeah, bear with us as we are getting used to how it all works and uh, finding our way around. We had a bit of a training session before, and we have Tom. Yes, yeah, it's definitely very different to playing something where it moves everything around for you. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, Okay, so I think what we'll start with is just talk about, I mean, we're not going to explain size or rules or anything that's going to take too long, so we assume that you know how to play this. Um, but I think we might as well start with introducing the different factions and their special powers. So, Tom, you are playing, hang on if I zoom into your screen, there we go, fancy. What are you playing? Uh, yeah, I'm playing Polania. Um, I keep coming back to them every time we play Scythe. I don't necessarily think the easiest guys to play, but they get lots of stuff from encounters, so they're quite explory, uh, which is quite interesting. Yeah, okay. So yeah, we'll see how that goes. And what is their special ability? Because they, every faction has something slightly different to the sort of standard rules. Oh, yes. Yeah, that's why they're exploring, because on the board you've got the encounters, uh, and basically normally you get two and you have to pick one of them. But um, uh, I think with them they get extra ones, basically. So you get to choose both the encounter cards or two or three. I can't remember, actually. We'll have to cross that. Yeah, we'll we get there. Okay. <laughs> right. Um, so for me, I've got the Nordics. So if I zoom up to there, hang on, I, I keep losing my screen here. There we are. And I'm just checking actually how this is going out on Twitch. And for some reason, I don't see it actually changing the screen and zooming in and out. So I might have to quickly ch uh, fix that in a minute. But let me explain. So I'm, I'm the Nordics and uh, I start up in that area there. And what's nice about the Nordics is their workers can actually cross rivers by themselves to start with no one can cross rivers until you get the river crossing or the river walking mech built um, but these workers they can basically swim and go across to other areas so what they're probably doing quite early on is start moving out and trying to spread out as quickly as they can so as i said let me just quickly see why Twitch is decided not to change the window. I think that might be something to do with uh, OBS, which is the streaming software I use. I'm just going to see uh, the client area. Okay, we want size. There we go. I think that's better. Yeah, it has basically it was um, using the wrong window to display but now we can zoom in and out so yeah so i'm going to quickly zoom back to tom's screen so you can see down there what he's got as well is that now changing oh dear i don't think it's very happy is it size so i said because we're using tabletopia it's the first time i've done this uh, let me just try this again see whether the zoom is actually happening so obviously makes for very riveting 
streaming me trying to fix technical issues but um if you see the... yeah sorry you've been quiet for a second <laughs> oh, so, yeah, yeah. Am, I, am i there sorry yeah uh, we're all good uh, i've worked out my encounter power basically yeah you draw an encounter card and normally you get to pick one of the three options or if Kalenia, they get to pick two of the three options okay right what i'm going to do is i'm going to change this to this and if i now zoom around yes that is slightly better i just need to adjust the window here to that and to that it's all happening live i do apologize but now i think we can zoom around and then people can actually see it on the stream which is important so if i'm zooming down to tom's area again oh, is it zooming there we go yeah it's working now do apologize for again technical issues but um <laughs> as i say getting used to all of this right so what we'll be doing is taking turns uh, doing different actions just quick explanation we basically both have uh four actions we can do um they're sort of arranged slightly differently for each player but basically it's a matter of either producing goods uh moving meeples around um what are the other ones i'm just trying to zoom in a bit further so i can remind myself of the way what they're called you can trade so you can basically swap resources around and you can bolster which basically gives you power if you do ever have a combat and we have this little token here which i'm it's tom's token but i'm just going to show you this one here you basically select what you're doing so tom is the first player and i think we should probably just start uh, the game and uh, see what yeah. happens all yours tom fantastic all right well let's say familiar reminding myself with the rules and trying to remember them i might actually get my copy out later on from the okay. box next to me because it might be easier yeah um but <laughs> for Lanier, i think it's always quite important to expand quite early to kind of get your hero into play as quickly as possible so where is my oh let's have a look the movement uh, is on the far left yeah, there we are. So what I'll do is plonk my thing over there uh, to take a move action, which means I can move two characters, one square each. So I will take that person over to there and my hero to that square. And that's me done. Okay. Short and sweet. Sounds like a good opening. So for the Nordics, as I said earlier, again, they'll probably want to spread out quite quickly. Um, but I'm just thinking... If you look at the bottom row actions of some of these, um, the way mine are arranged, if I move that, oop, I don't want to actually drag that. I apologize. Let me just lock this in place so I don't do that again accidentally. Lock that and lock this one as well. Um, yeah, so for my board here, whenever I move, I can also pay uh, wood to build a building. And I can see that currently my workers are on a wood space and an oil space now the oil is also useful um, to do upgrades which basically makes your actions more powerful so i'm actually gonna as my first turn going to produce and i can produce on two hexes basically one item so i'm gonna try and now this is going to be the tricky bit and table to help you trying to drag one wood just the one into where the work is with the woodlands and one oil which is up here over to oh, can i do this i just realized i should have right clicked really shouldn't i and then move that oil oh, dragging things as i say i'm still getting used to the interface uh, do i just right click it no okay there we go drag that into there so that was a very long turn but i'm done now over to you tom fantastic so i think i'll be doing a producer action next just because i can't move again unfortunately so i'll pop myself there and that will give me a, a worker and a wheat or whatever the yellow resource is called. Um, yep, so, food, yep. Uh, 
So, so this is the fun bit, trying to drag your resources yeah. around. <laughs> I mean, once they're on the so, board, it's going to be a bit easier. And you can select several things together to move them. Just be careful you don't move your encounter token as you drag other things across. <laughs> so if I pop that there, yeah. it kind of works. Close enough, and then you need to get a worker off your board. Yeah. And because we're actually using those keyboard shortcuts, I spent ages working out earlier. So workers are. So it's quite nice, yeah, in tabletop. Oh, yeah. Set... There you go. You can set camera angles and save them so you can quickly zoom around, which is what I'm doing here to hopefully make it a little bit faster. But it's still a matter of sort of, yeah, getting to the right space. Oops. There we go. That's fine. He's fallen over. There you go. That's a physics engine in action. <laughs> He's lying down. He's having a bit of a rest. It's fine. I think if we rotate them, they stand up again. So it's fine. Okay. And that's me done then. Cool. Over to you. Over to me. So now that I have produced, I will actually move. So my move action is this one here. So it's different to Tom's. And I can move basically two times um, just be careful whenever you do move don't leave your resources behind because then they don't belong to anyone and you need to basically have them to use them so i've got one wood um yeah so there's two options with the nordics normally you can either move the left hand worker over to this uh town space or the right hand worker over to the other town space. And I think I'll do the right hand worker because I think I'm going to leave that one there where it is at the moment with the wood space because I want to have some more wood. Did I just select those? I hope I did. Drag them over here so that worker takes the oil with it. And then good old, um, oh, what's his name? Bjorn and Max are moving into the oil space. I could have moved into the other space as well. But that is me done. Good, good. Okay. So I'm going to jump back over to my move action, I think. Okay. So let's move that over there. Tends to be the standard combo at the beginning. So at the moment, yeah, he can't cross across the rivers. So he's sort of stuck there. Which I can live with for now. Um, the main decision is whether or how many workers I want to get out, really. Um, Correct. I don't know if I want to. Yeah. So the two is good. I don't want any more than that. So. Yeah, the more workers you've got uh, out, the more you have to pay when you produce. So it's uh, one of those decisions. So, yeah, if I move this chap, my hero, over to here, and that means I guess I can just chuck this off the board, can't I? Is that right? Over yeah, there? chuck that. Chuck it somewhere to the side. That's fine. And then you can draw. Is it one encounter card? Yeah. So that's not the that's a green yeah, one. So you want? One. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh. Yeah. Did you so just drag I... an objective? That's fine. The objectives we don't actually need anymore. So you drop well, it down. Pop that back in there, and I'll shuffle those in a second. So that's fine. We're going to probably not going to draw them anyway, but I'll shuffle them now, and I'm going to lock them in place as well. So we don't accidentally draw them. Okay. I suppose I can read these out for your benefit, really. Yeah, um, because I can't actually see it, I don't think, unless, where have you, have you put it on the table somewhere? You're holding it at the moment. No, I'm holding it. I can probably put it on the board. Yeah, put go. it on the board because then I can double click it and then we can make it really big and people can see it. But yeah, if you read it out and let us know what you want to do. Right. Well, there is a farmyard scene with a mech in the background. Uh, I have the options to repair a broken fence to secure the pigs on the farm to gain some food and popularity. Uh, disassemble the mech in the background for spare parts for some dollars or euro. I can't remember what the currency is called in this game, actually. I think um, it's dollars, but, but we just call it money. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, so two money and any free resources, or I can st start all the pigs to start up stampede to gain a worker and free metal. But pay too popularity. Um, By the way, we've got Ross yes, from More Games, please, uh, on the chat. Hello, Ross. Thanks very much for joining us. Nice to see you, or hear you, or read you even. <laughs> mm. 
So what you're going to do is that right. normally these options are sort of the, the top one is sort of the best one, if you like. Uh, the second one is okay. The last one usually, you know, paying popularity isn't usually that beneficial, but sometimes worth doing. So you can choose two of those. Is that right? Uh, yeah, that's right. So I think what I'm going to do is... I'm going to go with the top two options, basically. So two food and a popularity, and then pay oh pay two gold actually to gain any for resources. Yeah, but I'll still do that anyway. I think so. Let's sort this out. So if I start with the first bit, which is two food and a popularity. So I drag myself up there, and then I'm going to sort of see what you're doing here. And the yellow is the food, isn't it? If I remember right now. That's it. Ross, I hope you can hear us okay as well. We had problems with the sound before, but hopefully this time it's okay. Yeah, and you have to move the uh, resources onto the encounter space as they're rolling okay. off Anna. <laughs> yeah, I'm not doing a very good job of keeping this tidy, am I? It's okay, so, as I say, it's going to get a bit messy. Right, so that's my two resources. So that's one part done. And the other bit was two gold. So if I take take my five off all right and just trying to follow what tom's doing zooming yeah around. sorry that's all right that's fine and then taking free gold back off we and then i get any free resources so what do you want that is a good question I think I should probably go with free metal, I reckon. So thinking where can we move now? Yeah, up there. Dragging it all the way to the encounter space. <laughs> oh, dear me. <laughs> oh no, it's it's gonna get a bit messy. It's fine. I think we know where they are. I'll drag that one over. So yeah, and that's that all done. Okay, so if you just want to drag the encounter card maybe off the board somewhere. And that's your... Yes, uh, but that, that'd be a discard over here, actually. That makes sense, doesn't it? Yep, that sounds good. And that's me all done, so over Is to it, you. Uh, actually, you've only done one move there, haven't you? Haven't you got another move to do? Uh, yeah, I don't want to move anyone else, strangely okay. enough, actually. So, that's yeah. fine, that's, that's fine. You don't have to do all the actions on the board. So now that I have moved last time, I'm thinking I'm just here to pay for a split second. Yeah, sure. I'm going to do a production as well now. So you produce on every worker space. If you have several workers there, you produce several of those resources. Um, well, I say resources because you can obviously produce people as well. And you only need one worker to produce another person, which is interesting. But there we go. So I'm going to produce on two spaces one worker over here in the village and as I was saying earlier I want the wood so I can build some buildings later so the wood goes over here and just to explain the bottom row action I could do as well if I had the resources which I don't have and that's quite a lot of food to do the enlist actions let me just zoom back down here the reason why buildings are maybe quite useful uh, in this particular case are the uh, end of round bonuses so or end of game bonuses should I say these are if you have several buildings uh, built next to each other in, in adjacent hexes you get so many well, coins but well, they are actually points as well in this game so if you manage to build all four of your buildings next to each other you get actually nine points and that's not bad not bad at all so I'm, I'm hoping I can do that and also get a benefit we shall see. I'm back. And there's Tom back. And it's your turn. So I did a production, got another worker out, another wood. I just explained no, about the end of game bonus for the buildings next to each other. So what are you thinking now? No. Yeah, sorry, I'm just having a quick chat. But I think, yeah, I thought I'd made a mistake, but I haven't, thankfully. Not through, not through forward planning, but just yeah. uh, good luck. 
Uh, I'm going to take another production action. So if I move the counter over to that, right, so starts, that's going to give me, I get to choose two squares I can produce on, don't I? Yep, and then you produce as many as you have workers on there. So there'll be one food yeah. and two workers. Yeah, so this should, um, no, no. Yeah, if you shift, that's it. You got it. Ah, fantastic. Sorry, I've just worked out how to scroll around the screen whilst holding stuff. How do you do that, that makes then? Life just cursor keys, is it? Just, yeah, just uh, WASD. Okay, um, yeah. Because I've just been dragging and trying to scroll around, but instead I've just zoomed out with the scroll wheel and dropped stuff from a very great height onto the board and hope for the best. Uh, so that's my two workers produced, and yep. I get to produce another food as well. That's so. right, that's off the screen there for the viewers. So massive food production happening there for the Polania. They're obviously not going to starve for a while yet. And they've got no, three, no. is it three metal there, which is nice. Let's see. So to make a mech, so I... you could, you'd need four metal. So he's nearly there. Yeah, not far off, but more importantly, I can actually do my production secondary so I can pay free food to get one of my lieutenants out, I think. Yeah, you're enlisting. Yes, yeah, so I will be taking the enlisting secondary action. Let's zip up here. So, so you take your three food, drag it off somewhere. Yeah, I was going to say if I... We'll put a discard pile over here. Somewhere where you can still reach it, I guess, but sort of a way that it's clear it's not yours. I think then it'll be fine. And then I shall take my mech chat. Okay. Uh, my enlisting option over there. And ooh, I just work out where I put it, actually. Yeah. Uh, Do you want two power, two coins? Oh, yeah. Two popularity or two combat cards? I'm going to go to popularity, I think. Okay. And right, if I do that, so I'll take them to five. That's it. And then I you, think that's you get two coins as well. A, you get two coins. I do, yeah. Then. Right. So, so draw two and then drop those up there, and that's me all done. So over to you. Thank you. Um, well, we used to play Scythe a lot, didn't we? But this is such a different experience on Tabletopia, <laughs> trying to drag things and all that. So I can I think the easiest for me to is to do move again. I think that's sort of a standard opening for most factions. You move and you produce. So I will actually... Hmm, I want some more wood, and I will need some metal at some point. So I'm going to, first of all, move one of these workers actually um that one. sorry about that it was a bit of a whirlwind five minutes but i'm here and fully attentive now okay no worries move that one there and then i'm going to move bjorn up here to do an encounter so i'm going to chuck that off the board somewhere to the side and we're going to move down there to pick up the top encounter card. Now I'm gonna flip it. And then if I zoom in, you guys can maybe read it as well. We're gonna read it out. So I've encountered, well, where am I? I'm in a tunnel somewhere with a big mech behind me and it's not actually me on the picture, but that's fine. Uh, so I can either salvage ammo from a secret underground facility, which means I get two power and one popularity. That's very tasty. I can bribe the researchers to give me an advanced weapon. So I can pay two coins to gain four power. Or I can spy on the researchers secrets after pretending to befriend them, which means I pay two popularity to gain one upgrade and any two resources. Now that is also very tasty, but two popularity. So if I come out of this and just have a quick look, popularity wise over here, I'm behind. So that's not looking too good. Power wise, um, I'm ahead, so I'm not too worried about power. Yet the top one gives me two power and one popularity, so I think I'll go for the obvious choice there. So it's two power, which gets me up to six, and then 
one popularity which means I can catch up with Tom a little bit on that front as well and then yeah Tom if you want to drag a card to one side feel free yeah of course I'll shove it on the perfect discard button so if I zoom up back to my screen up there so I've done the two movements let me just move Bjorn a little bit more central but then I'm done it's all over to you Tom Right. Fantastic. Okay. Right. Sorry, this is where I suddenly stole out of it because I've not thought this through. That's fine. <laughs> Same here. Uh, <laughs> this is going to be a long this game. Is a usual, <laughs> it's a usual Polanian problem. I always hit this point where I'm like, well, I can't river walk. I can't build mechs because I haven't got any metal in my starting zone. Yeah. So, so you're just sort of trade. But trade isn't very great for you either, is it? Because no secondary isn't like my worst brilliant. action yeah so then, um okay right so i think um, i'm gonna just have to bite the bullet and do it there because it needs to be done okay um, so you have to pay a coin so, so that goes back onto my little off-screen stack. Yeah. So that's my one coin paid. So that means I just get two resources of my choosing, don't I? Any two resources you want or one popularity. So that's the slash there. You can do one or the other. But I guess you will want to go for resources because uh, yes. you so want I the metal. So, yeah. so if you zoom so into this cool. a bit. Oh, I'm moving his cubes now. Whoops, didn't mean to do that. I can put them anywhere on my thing, can't I? So I'm going to pop them over here. Yeah, anywhere where you have a worker. Right. And that is me all done for the round, I believe. So, yeah, you can't do your no secondary. No secondaries for me to do? No. Nope. No. Nope. So, yeah, it's all yours. Okay. So now I've moved again. I think the next thing I do want to do is produce. And that then gives me... So I can produce on two hexes. So I'm definitely going to go for another wood because wood allows me to build buildings. And as I said, buildings also give nice juicy points at the end if you can build them next to each other. And then I might as well produce a food uh, because food allows me to enlist. So like Tom said, you can drag and press AWSD. There we go. Nice. Okay. That makes it a bit easier. You can zoom around a bit more quickly. And that's my food there. And I haven't got enough food to mo do my secondary, so I'm done. Fantastic. Okay. Thanks, Ross. Ross has to go. That's fine. Thanks very much. We'll, yeah, we'll carry on scything. And if you want to join Ross's Twitch stream as well, he's got a schedule going at the moment. If you go to tabletop games blog slash isolation con, there's a Google Calendar on there which shows various live streams that are happening at the moment in this time. Ross is on there. He's, his Twitch channel is obviously twitch.tv slash more games, please. So you'll find him there as well if you want to have a look. But check out the calendar and check out his streams. He's very good. I, I always love uh, listening to his voice. Lovely voice. <laughs> anyway, all yours, Tom. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so I'm just paying a coin to take a bolster action. So that gains me two power. Yeah. So if I move that up there, and then I hopefully I've got yep, four can metal take to a do secondary. It. Yeah. Yeah, I've yeah, got five metal, so that should do it. So just drag them off somewhere. Shut those over there. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Um, so that gets me a mech, which would be yeah. interesting. So let's go and have a look and see what options I've got. Now there's various things. The river walk tends to be possibly the most popular to start with to get you out of your area. But there are various other ones. So if we look at the Polania ones, actually, do you want to talk us through the ones you've got so we can see? I've just zoomed into your mat there. So we've got a river walk on the left there. Which yeah, which uh, you can do. Submerge is probably the most interesting one because um, you can move to and from lakes and move from any one lake to another lake. So, in essence, it's kind of very similar to river walk, but means you can cover a lot of bigger distances. Because if you look at the lakes on the board, there's one right, 
there's the center ones around here and here. Yeah. Um, so that's one. I'm trying to think where the other ones are actually. Um, so you obviously got the so lake yeah. straight ahead of you as well. So you can jump into that one. And yeah. then jump all the way around the board if you wanted to. That huge movement for Polonia there. Yeah, so I actually think that's going to be the one that I'm going to take because it's a lot more, I think it gives a lot more freedom personally than um, sure. being shall able we, to use. Shall we look at the others as well though while you're there? Uh, just so we yeah, get of course. a feel. Just try not to throw my knee everywhere. Um, <laughs> So yeah, the other one is camaraderie, which means in combat I don't lose any popularity when I force my opponent's workers to retreat. Nice. Which is yeah, quite good. I mean, it helps. I mean, it's um, using workers to block attacks and stuff is obviously a pretty solid tactic inside. Yeah. Um, and then the other one's speed, which is yeah, I think generally has very that. strong. Yeah. Cool. And everyone has that one. So you're going for submerge. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. See how we get on. So I have to build that. I can pop it anywhere, can't I? Actually, so I'll probably anywhere pop with it the worker. Yeah, yeah. So there's always a key oh, thing goodness. when you're producing things; it has to be where the worker is, or when you're making things. So you can't put it next right. to your hero. And the wet maker isn't very happy. It's sitting on metal. I think you have to move it up a bit. No. That's fine. Just move it. Right. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, we can. I, th I think there we know we where it is. <laughs> Yeah, there we go. So yeah, so that's adjacent to the lake, um, okay. and that secondary gives me four gold. In, yeah, yeah, four gold because I've got my. Um, does that apply to me as well as you? Actually, I can't remember if the lieutenant. It applies to yourself, you and then players on your left and right. Obviously, in the two-player game, it would apply to me if I had that uncovered. So if I look on my board, for example, at the moment I haven't done any enlist actions, but if I had uncovered the this enlist action here, the builder mech one then i would have gotten a coin out of that as well but for tom yes you get all the ones that are uncovered whether it's the ones are on the board already or the ones in the list section so yeah four, four gold for you uh, so yeah let's um pop those all up there so yeah and that's me all done in which case so you uh, you're good right now what can i do um i've got three wood and i need three wood to build a building so on my next move action, which is probably what I'm going to do next, I can actually build a building. So I just have to think, do you remember, Tom, the uh, end of game bonus where you have all the different uh, buildings next to each other? If they're yep. on different sides of a river, do they count as adjacent for the end of game bonus? Ooh. Do you know? That is a very good question. Because obviously um... it will affect where I build mine i mean i have plenty of spaces where i could build a building but it might make a difference um, yeah i'm just jumping through to the um sorry i'm just skim reading through the rule book actually to see if they have anything about it so that's fine and if you yeah, do yeah. that i'm just going to start doing my move action then yeah of course because i will have to do that to then build my building so my little bjorn can't move out yet but I think it's time for me to start maybe getting some metal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this worker over here with the food. And whoop, if I can drag the right thing, yeah, groove them onto this space where we can then mine some metal. So I'll move and I'm going to follow with this worker here and follow back onto the food space. So that's my two movements done. So, yeah, Tom, have you seen anything in the rule book? No, I've not had any choice yet. Sorry, I'm just uh, jumping through to see. Um... That's fine. What I'll do is I'm just going to spend that three wood then. And a third one, if I can select it. It's a little bit awkward. So... I think we could just make the decision now to say that it does, as long as we're both in agreement. It's, uh... Okay, so what what do you want to do? Do we say I'd say yeah, if they're adjacent, you know, I don't think the rivers makes them not adjacent, if that makes sense. Okay. So I'd say yeah, that's fine. I'm still gonna build probably um well, now this is the thing, because now I could build my tunnel where Bjorn is, which means that tunnel uh, just basically to, just to chip in basically, yeah. Uh, rivers do not break adjacency. So okay. you're fine. Cool. So yeah, so we got the official rules. I'm gonna build the tunnel where well, I've got my worker, so I have to build it where work is. But 
Bjorn is there as well. So Bjorn can now move from that tunnel that I've just built to any other tunnel space on the board and back again as if they were adjacent, which is quite nice. So I've now freed my hero, which is quite useful. So that actually probably worked out better than I had intended. And I also get two coins for doing this. So while I take the money, I think, um, actually, because I'm doing this on screen, I should probably do this uh, now. So get two coins and put them on my stack of ones if I can. Will it let me? No, I'm just going to plonk them there. There we go. And that is me done. So, Tom, decisions. Yeah, sorry, I just noticed some space. <laughs> some of the uh, uh, Russians snuck up onto the board somehow. Oh, yeah, I've, I've, I've taken everything else off, but not, yeah. The Crimeans. Uh, so let me just actually, while you do that, I'm going to take some tokens off as well. I'll take the Crimeans. I think one of the Crimeans is on you and player mode for some reason. Oh, no. Sneaky. Yeah. Oh, so, no. That might just be my. Um, is that one of the Crimeans or is that one of the uh, food resources? No. Oh, no. That one. Crimeans. Yeah. 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 The food resource should be on the board. So, yeah. Right. We set, set this up seven. earlier today to try and get rid of so basically when you when you set this up as a two to five player game you have all five factions out there all set up so we basically removed three of them and removed most tokens but missed the actual workers so there we are that's all sorted so you are doing well, another move action yeah i think at this stage i can do with expanding so i'm mm, with my river walk, I can now move to lakes. So what I'm going to do is have a little think and realize that I can't cheat. So <laughs> yeah, this is, this is where it gets tricky because normally you could move a mech carrying workers, but my workers can't move to and from lakes. So can't they? Um, I thought they can when they're on a mech. They can. You can take them with them, like they have resources. Well, I can take them with me, but I don't think um, I'll be able to move them out, if that makes sense. Oh, that is a good question. Yes. So I'm moving all of them over here anyway for now. Oh, dear me. Let's see. I think uh, there's a rule book here, which I'm trying to bring up now for everyone. So if um, you find the Polania faction a bit further down going to be a little while so i'm just going to scroll so that's quite nice in tabletopia you have the rules there as well faction abilities all right if i move back i think i've just gone past them so polania uh da, 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 da. instead of picking it on, okay now that's just the faction ability let's see is the next further on counters the factory Objectives. I have to look at my objectives actually later. Game and scoring. Characters. Highlight rules. Hmm. Combat. And then you've got the automa, which I don't want. So can I jump? If I come out of the rule book. Sorry, I I couldn't find it in the rules, Tom. No, no, sorry. I mean, that's me done. I don't think so, basically, because I think the Riverwalk abilities only apply to your mechs and your heroes. Um, so, And normally that would that be fine, mind? because obviously if you carry the uh, workers over with your mech, you go from land to land. It's just obviously different if you are in a lake. <laughs> um, well, yeah, I think because I'm moving one square and technically they're in a lake, they can't get can't off board, it. basically, yeah, and yeah. swim to shore. Uh, I'm all done do. anyway. I've basically moved my four chap, four workers, and my hero and a mech into that lake adjacent to me. So we've got a very busy lake there, and then Tom can move yeah. into any other lake afterwards if he wanted to, or just move back onto land. Yeah. So factory is obviously the the place to go with this as well. So if you can mm. hold that, 
but I don't know whether that's what Tom was planning or not. So I was talking about the objectives just now as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just show you my two objectives um, and see if I can actually zoom it in a little bit on screen. Oh, that's the wrong card. No, I want that one. Come on. Zoom in. Will you please? It's not zooming now for some reason. Do I have to click it? No. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag the card onto the table. I know Tom can see it now, but I'm going to read it anyway. So I've got two objectives uh, that we will have. We can only complete one of them with our factions. And one of them is the woodland advantage. I want to control at least three forest territories at the end of my turn. So I've already got one forest where I'm getting my wood from. So that's something to bear in mind for me. I'm going to put that back into my hand. And then the other one. Can I zoom at this time? Let's see what happens here. There we go. It's zooming in. But I'm going to read it out anyway. So it's Foundations of the Empire. If I have at least six of my tokens, that's characters, workers, mechs, and structures on one territory, I complete this one, which is doable, but maybe a bit tough at the moment. So these are my two objectives, just for your reference. And then I put that back into my hand. And there we go. It's off the table. So what can I do? Let's see. So I've moved and build last time I can't move again but I've got my tunnel there so I might just produce some more and start working towards a mech so I can produce some two hexes so I can either go for some more wood which I won't do this time I'm going to go for metal instead and produce on the farm hex as well to give me a food so if I drag actually select both of them now they're a bit out of the way and drag them over there and then use my cursor keys to plonk them sort of there let's see so that one goes there and I drag that one over oh. Oh, come on that there so I've got two food now so quite enough yet and that's me done fantastic um. Yeah, I mean, from a little quick screen read of the rules, it doesn't look like my workers can move out of the lake basically on their own, much like a you know a worker can't river walk unless they're on a mech. Basically, the yeah. mech's the one with the river walk. So. Okay, makes sense. Right, so let's just jump down to my player map. Yeah, hopefully, there we go. Yeah. So I think. I'm going to spend the gold. Um, Do some more trading. Yeah, to get some resources. Uh, so yeah, I'm just going to take two oil, I think. Right. Makes sense to hopefully get an upgrade later when you're moving. Yes, exactly. Um, I mean, that's a trick often with I'm fine with um, so side is just to make sure you don't really have any wasted actions, as it were. Yeah. Not popular down here. That's the aim. You and try to do a top row and a bottom row action every time, as soon as you can. And that's me all done, in which case, so yeah, over to you. Okay. So, I think I do want to move this time. It seems a bit limited at the moment. And I'm just thinking, do I want to trade... I've got one oil. So what I could do, I'm actually going to do this. I'm going to do a trade this time. So I have to pay one coin, which I'm going to grab from here and just chuck to the side of the table there. So I can now get two resources, which will be two oil. I'm not actually going to take them because I use those two oil and the oil I already have on the board, which I'm going to try and pick. Come on and drag that off the board where is the oil over here somewhere there so i'm just going to drop that there oh zooming into the wrong place sorry yeah so i've now bought to oil spent 
three oil so the ones on the two I bought and another one so I can now do an upgrade and the upgrade basically allows you to take a square cube from the top or any top row and place it into a slot in the bottom row so I'm just thinking which one do I want to I think I always like to use a produce to make my produce stronger so if I take that off I can now do three produce actions and then I have to think what I want to make cheaper and I'm thinking wood might be the thing for me to do because every time I move I can build a building which means I could actually quite easily build a chain of buildings so I'm going to plonk that there and that's all I do and I don't think Tom has enlisted his upgrade action no so he doesn't get the no, benefit just the max at the moment that's me done okay well just to capitalize on it I'm going to take a move action again of course yeah so my hero is going to move up to there and then let's not leave my resources in the lake as well <laughs> and i'm going to move those over to there and um, so i get to draw a factory card that's right isn't it yeah so you draw all of them and then you choose one so, oh okay oh, yeah fantastic. so you can put them in your hand i can't see them yeah mm -hmm. So if you want to keep it secret, you may. I was just also checking right. the live stream. The audio seems to be still working, which is good. This is all very nerve wracking territory. Okay, so this is just having a little. I mean, I will obviously see which one you've chosen at the end because that'll obviously go face up down near your player mat or your action selection mat but I won't see the other two which will be a surprise if I ever get to the factory <laughs> I think the Nordics are always the slowest to get there but Polania usually aren't that fast either so it's always a bit of a race between them two because that's the only two factions in the game okay well yeah, so put two back face down. Yeah, so one face up. I... And let's see if I get this right. Yep, F for flip. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not watching. There you go. And then the right, other one so goes that's in front my of you. Move done. And oh, I need to put my card down there. Yeah, so I do want to see that. that there. The there we go. So this is basically now an additional action that Tom can take instead of just the four he's got. And they always have a double move at the bottom there. So that is moving one character two spaces plus any bonuses you might get from speed mix. So he's paying combat cards to gaining either an upgrade or power no and and a power there's not an l there's no slash there so very very good right yeah i think i think it works quite well just because my upgrades don't get me a lot of resources even though they're cheap so yeah yeah makes sense one less to worry about so then that's that done and i can pay for an upgrade i believe since i've got the resources for it so let's take the pay my two oil and just chuck them over there yep it's going to get very messy on this board, but we can't really see it. It's fine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then I'm definitely upgrading my move. Um, but what am I going to make cheaper is the question. Uh... Yeah, it's always a decision. Mm -hmm. And yeah, all these boards are slightly different. So it can make a difference if you played it with the same faction with a different board, it can make for quite a different strategy. I'm gonna, I think I may regret this, but I'm gonna upgrade my, um, make my enlisting cheaper. 
um, for Fair now. Enough. And you get a coin. Uh, yeah, well, good stuff. Right. Cool. Pop that over there. And I think that is me all done, in which case. So, yeah, over to you. Right. So, I've done my upgrading, which means my production is more powerful. So, currently I've got three workers, well, three hexes with one worker each. So, if I produced now, I would get a metal, a food, and a wood, which is quite nice. Alternatively, I could move around, but I'm not too bothered at the moment. I'm just going to sit there. So I'm going to do the production, which means one wood, one metal, and one food. I'm just going to try and pick up from here. That was a bit tricky. It'd be so nice if there was some sort of menu where you can just select the bits you want and they just appear in your hand. <laughs> and one wood. I will drag them over there. Move along with the cursor keys. And oh, they all spread out, so I have to rearrange them. So the wood goes on the woodlands. And the food goes on the food space. Now, normally when we play Scythe, we tend to have overlapping turns to speed things up. Now, I'm not doing that at the moment because I think we've got nice to see, but I think we should probably start doing that. We'll just switch around. And I've done production, so if I had four food, I could do in a list. I have three foods, I'm not quite there yet. So it's Tom's again. Righty ho. Hey. Well, um, I'm going to take a production action, which uh, isn't actually massively useful because most of my workers are in a factory, but it does get me one food. Yeah. Um, so okay, is... There's four workers on the factory, and the factory doesn't produce anything. But there's one worker over here. No. But the upside of all of that is that, that oh, I have to pay a power for that as well. Let's not forget. Yeah. So move that down there. Okay. And uh, I then can thankfully afford to do another enlist action because yeah. I upgraded that power scale. So what I'll so do. So I'm going to take. If you don't mind, I'm going to give you two coins, which you get for the bottom row action. Ah, oh, thank you. Just and to I'll, uh... help you along a bit. If I can drop them onto your stack of coins, which is always hard when you select... Oh, yeah, nearly there. <laughs> nearly did it. Fantastic. Well done. Ooh, there. It's kind of a five o'clock. Yeah, you got it. I've taken my two power cards that I get um, from the... Okay enlisting spot i've enlisted for the secondary brilliant done the coins um so that's me all done in which case so you spend your food you. yeah so let's try and speed things up now so i need one more wood to build another building if i do a move action but i will move because i want to start also getting some hmm Yes, I think hmm, this is interesting. So I could use my tunnel and move my character through that tunnel all the way down there, which is one move. And then the other move, Yes, I do want to have more food in the next action. So I definitely want food. I need three metal for mech. So I do want to produce metal as well, but I also want some ore. So I'm going to move uh, this worker with the wood down across the river because I can swim to there, which also blocks off that tunnel as well. And I don't have the two wood to do anything, so I'm done. So my thinking is Okey I'm near an objective with my uh, character there, so that might be useful as well. Right. I'm going to jump over and take a move action. Um, so you've so... got three movements you can do. So 
So you're leaving one worker behind? Uh, I don't know. That was unintentional. Okay. <laughs> uh, just checking. Right. So that's free there. And then I can move. Yeah. So there's oh, a nice yeah. thing is one. the Mac takes the workers for one move action and then you can move another worker independently from there for a second movement. And that gives you now a third movement. Obviously, the objective here. Yeah. There we go. So let's see what you've got this time. If you plonk it onto the Crimean space, so, yeah. maybe. Let's drop that on the map for everyone to see. Yeah. Uh, if I zoom in, take it. There we go. So yeah, it looks like a barroom scene. I can arm wrestle at the local tavern to gain some power and popularity. Buy everyone a round of drinks for gold and popularity. Um, or start a fight. Yeah, <laughs> why not? Build a, <laughs> and sneak away with the keys to the tavern and build a structure. <laughs> it just seems quite <laughs> controversial. Um, so let's have a look. So you can do two of those oh, again. A building would actually be quite nice. Mm. Um, Although I wish I had that card when I still had someone on the factory. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. There we go. Uh, yeah, so it, home. It resolve the objectives at the end of your movement. Um, so I think I'm going to gain two power and a popularity to start off with. Um, that makes sense. Shall I do the power for you? Uh, I've already done it. Actually. Okay. So, um, and then the other one, I think I'm going to pay a popularity to build a structure. So, if you want to do my popularity, yeah. Uh, Just tapping along, so that goes back to five. If I drag that over you a bit, I find it very hard to click on things. And I'm going to build a windmill um, next to that worker there on the tunnel. Okay. So I'm going to drag that uh, out of the way. Thank you very much. Um, that's my move done, and I haven't got any oil, so yeah, that's me all done. So over to you. Okay. Sorry, I'm just AFK for a very split second. Yeah, that's fine. So I was saying I was going to do a production because that means I get another food. So I'm not going to take that one because I'm going to spend it for the bottom reaction. So let's do the other production. I can do a metal over there which is nice. So let's grab one of these metals I chucked over there earlier, I think, or maybe Tom did. So one metal there. And I can produce in three hexes because I upgraded that earlier. So I can also produce one oil. So if we grab an oil from there. Ooh, come on. And scroll across and down there we go we've got an oil so we're starting to assimilate uh, accumulate some resources so and as i said i would technically produced a food but i'm not actually going to put it on the board because i'm going to use that food plus three more to do my enlist action so I'll take those three and then back did Hello. you say you're enlisting by any chance? I will do, yes. In which case, I'm going to take a card because I get a power card, a uh, combat card for yep. you enlisting. Okay. So I've done. Okay. Oop, I've scrolled to the wrong screen just then. Okay. So enlisting gives me two coins, which I can take in a minute. I just now need to decide which one I want to enlist. Uh, I'm just going to have a look at what Tom sort of might be doing um, doesn't necessarily help you things but he's got two food and if you look at his board we can enlist with two food so it's chance that he's going to do more enlisting so I'm actually going to use my enlist person and drop it onto the two popularity let's just put the pressure on there so I move up to popularity on the popularity track, which is nice. If I can get to my heart, there we go, going up to the six space. I'm going to have to do a classic side uh, maneuver, back. which is what we always seem to do, which is me forgetting that I completed one of my objectives last round. So, uh, 
Can't you do it if, next round, or you're going to move away from it? It's at the end of the. Oh, actually, no, I still can. Actually, that's fine because I'm not going to be moving, am I? So that's all right. Yeah, don't worry. It's up to you. I mean, if, if you, yeah, if you can do it on your next turn, then do it on your next turn. If yeah, not, you can have a taxi taxi. So I'm getting two coins for that. But obviously, I don't get the enlist bonus now because I've only just enlisted it, I believe. Yeah, is that right? Tom, so I've just enlisted the enlistee chap. Um, mm -hmm. But I don't get the combat card that I've re revealed now because I only just enlisted him. So I um, get it yeah, next I time. Think yeah. Yeah, it'll be next time. Okay, so moving on to you then. What are you going to be doing? Okay, well, I'm going to move over and take a production action. Uh, I say that cost me a pallet. Yeah. And uh, right, resources I'm going to get. So I'm two hexes we'll for you. Oh, yeah, that's true. Um, so... And the windmill, though. The, the windmill, so you always get the oil on the windmill. Oh, do you? Yeah, so the windmill produces always. Um, but obviously, even if you have additional workers in that windmill space, you don't get anything for those. You only get one oil for the windmill. If you then also want to produce in that space with your workers, you can do that on top of that, but you don't need to. You can obviously use your other oil space to produce with whatever it is, three or four workers. I can't quite see. <laughs> so we're talking about this down here. So we've got the windmill here. will definitely produce an oil. And then... Tom has the choice either producing in this oil space with the three works to get three oil, which makes sense, or producing this hex to get one oil on top of the windmill oil, which probably makes less mm. sense. And then he can sh produce another, either another food or another oil. Oh dear me, sorry, I'm making this a bit messy. That's um, fine. Right. Right, so. So three oil there. One, one for the windmill, yeah. and I did put a food token somewhere. There we are. And there it is. Um, so in, in the pop lake. that one over there with that worker there. Okay. Okay. And then I'm going to spend. Oh, I should have just. Uh, yeah, I should have just left the two oil. <laughs> yeah, but let's put those two food back over there because I'll be doing my secondary to take an up enlisting action. Oh, sorry. Um, the yeah, the I, food you could have left. Yeah, sorry, not the oil. Um, the wrong column. So I'm gonna pop that there. Two power. Gets me. I'll do power yeah, for you. Do that. And so yeah, and taking the list action gets me two gold and a combat card as well. So if I just put one of those three up there and one down there. Yeah. So if you take your combat, combat card, card, because I've got my enlisty chap there as well, I get a combat card um, too. So if you take on yours, I'll take mine. Yeah, I have them. So yeah, okay. and that's, oh, and then at the end of my round, I can. Yeah, objective. Don't forget that this time. Uh, uh, it's this one. So yeah, Northern Advantage, which is control three tundras at the end of my turn. So let me just zoom into that. There we go. So three tundra territories. Let's have a look on the map. So there's one there, one there, and then if we scroll further, where is he? Up there. That's three. So yeah, well done. So if I tuck that, I'm just going to mix that in with the discard pile for the... Uh, the yeah, counters. don't worry about that. That's fine. And then I have to... I mean, start, I get to move one of my stars out, don't I? Yes. So if we scroll up to the star so. section... One objective done. And over to you. Thank you. Hmm. So yeah, so the game ends when someone plays their sixth star and that the game ends immediately. The person obviously can finish their turn, but no one else gets another turn, which has been controversial with size. I actually quite enjoy it that it's that way. It makes it very abrupt, so you do have to think. Right, enough talking. I've got three metal which means I will do a bolster action. So I have to pay one coin, which I'm just going to drop outside there. 
and then I can either move my power up to or take a combat card. Now I think I'm going to do the power two from six to eight and then as I said I've got three metal so I can spend that to actually get a first mech out and getting all mechs out is another star as well. Are you deploying a mech did you say? Yeah I deploy a mech. That gets me a coin. I was going to say it probably gives you something and I get two coins if I can find them. There's one there and I'll take another one there. There we go. And then, yeah, so my question now is, do I want Riverwalk, which I don't necessarily need. I've got the tunnel now. Do I want Seaworthy? Seaworthy is where I can move into and out of a lake. So basically the lake becomes like a land space, but I can't, unlike Polena, they can't jump between lakes. I can't do that. I can just move in and out, which is nice. But again, I'm thinking, don't know whether I need that. I'm thinking I probably want speed, but let's look at artillery. So artillery before combat, I pay. If I pay a power, the opponent loses to combat power on the bar, which can make a huge difference in combat, but I don't think you're quite there. So I'm going to go for the speed mech and I have to place it on a worker space. So oh, I'm zooming out a bit too much. I think I'm going to plonk it over here on that tunnel space, just blocking that off a bit. And I've taken my two coins already, so that means I'm done. Okay. Right, well, I'm going to jump over and take a move action. Um, so let's work out where I'm heading and what I'm doing, really. Um, right. Yeah, I mean, this this feels a bit slow at the moment, but size always does at the beginning, and then suddenly people put like star after star out. It just takes a while to build that engine to get that going. But of course, on Tabletopia, this is all much slower because we're still getting used to how you pick things up and all that. Tom seems to have got the neck of it, but I, I'm not quite there yet. <laughs> So that's two of my moves done. Um, oh, can I? Well, no, I think I'm shooting a little bit, actually. Um, did you jump just then? You have to move yeah, into I did. the lake yeah, first, yeah. <laughs> nice try. And, uh, um, actually, um, Are you thinking about moving somewhere else? Can I move a second? I know I have to move a separate unit, don't I? Is that right? You can, with those moves, you can either do them at different units, so you can do one unit, two spaces, basically. Because I've got my triple move upgraded, so. So you have triple move. So you can either move three units, one space, one unit, three spaces. One oh, unit, okay. two spaces, one unit, one space. So yeah, you can split it up. It's only on the factory that move has to be one unit, two spaces. You can't split that up and you can't uh, okay. combine it. Oh, that's fine. In which case, so I shall move my mech that other square. Um, and right, so that's my move all done. And then I'm going to spend two barrels of oil. Um, so Yeah, so he's now doing the upgrade again which is nice i think tom's got his engine going if i look on my board and we're not quite there yet Just, um, what am i doing oh, i don't know oh, i haven't picked them up that's why it's confused ah yeah they're still Sorry. there i can see them in the lake yeah so there, drop those off there so that gives me a upgrade action so that's a good question. What we're going to upgrade? Um, yeah, I'm, more production. Yeah, I'm going to upgrade. Yeah, my production, I think, and make my mechs cheaper. 
Good um, choice. So that gives me a gold and a power. Uh, have you got the... Um... No, I haven't got that enlisted. No. So if I take twos off... And take a three. And place that yeah. for three. And then... So I see a power... Uh, yeah, one on the power track. So it takes me up to seven. Yeah. So that's me all done. Thank you. Cool. So... Oh, why are we not moving? There we go. Move up to my board. Hmm. I think my engine is stalled a bit, which I find with this game. I get so far. Okay. I think what I was going to do is do a trade. So paying coins is not always a good idea, but sometimes needs must. So I'm going to pay a coin to get two oil but again I'm not taking those because I've got a third oil here on that space so I'm gonna for my bottom row action I'm gonna use the two oils I just bought plus this one I'm just dragging off to do an upgrade so Tom I think you get a power yeah done so I'm gonna upgrade my move I think makes sense and I'm going to make my upgrades cheaper i think for now and then i'm done okay well i'm going to spend a factory card I'm sorry a combat, combat card, card even yep. to use my factory card yeah um yeah. get my hand I'm gonna, up i'm going to do your power so you can worry about your upgrade so you're now on nine power Yeah, just drop it by the side. I don't think we have to worry about it. I don't think we're going to reshuffle that deck. So I've done your power, so you just need to worry about the upgrade. Now, you don't get, if I, for example, had listed my upgrade action, I wouldn't get the bonus of this one because he's not doing the actual upgrade action. He's doing the factory card. So just something to bear in mind. So, and they're uh, doing an encounter, so it's draw one. Uh, so, yeah, you've done the double move. So I'm only using one of it, actually, strangely enough, but there we go. Um, so, let's have a look. What is this one? So, yeah, I've got a number of choices. Uh, take photos of some enthusiastic soldiers for metal and popularity. Uh, hire a mercenary to join my group for, so I can pay to enlist a recruit. Or <laughs> practice your shooting at the unsuspecting targets to gain two <laughs> popularity and four metal. Which, uh, Always a laugh. <laughs> yes. So I think I'm going to gain two metal and a popularity and then pay two popularity to gain four metal. So... Um, if I do, if I gain a six metal, do you just want to lower my popularity by one? Yep, we'll do that. So over here, Tom is now dropping down to four popularity, whereas I'm on six. So I'm on that threshold to get more points at the end. So if I can get up there, that's quite useful. And I'll, I'll discard the encounter card. Thank you very much. And, and then Tom is just putting the six. Was it was it six metal or was it? Yeah, it was six metal. Yeah, yeah. all um, up there on the encounter space. And then that will be me done. Okay. So to you. Right. This is not looking amazing. I need to get more workers out soon. I think so got my speed neck which is nice I will do a move action because I do three movements one of the movements will definitely be the uh, Bjorn here my hero to go into the encounter so I just have to worry about the other two now I'm not worried about oil so much anymore because all I can do later when I do a trade action I can get buy two oil to do another upgrade so that's a nice combo there going on so I probably want some wood, which means I could move that worker there. And actually, no, I'm going to actually use the mech to move that worker. So apologies for that. 
I'm going to grab that one. So that's basically the mech dragging the worker and the wood onto that space. I could have gone two spaces, but I'm only going to do one space. And then I probably want to produce lots of metal to get more mechs out. So I'm going to... Um, hmm. So I've got three production spaces I can produce on. Do I want another human being? Maybe I'll do that first. So I'm going to move my other worker over here. Yeah, I'll do that. So that's two movements. And then, as I said, I'm going to move Bjorn over here onto the encounter space. So that encounter token can get off the screen. There with the Soviet workers. <laughs> and then we're going to draw an encounter. Flip that over and then have a look. So the encounter is, well, this looks like the Scots actually and some big mechs in the background. So I can either point the traveling convoy in the right direction. I gain two money and one popularity, which is nice. Gives, gets me over that threshold. I can ask the mechs to blow a hole in the mountainside. I have to pay two gold to gain four metal. Now four metal is tempting. It means two mechs as well. Hmm. I can steer the stranger way off course, giving him no other choice but to join my troop. I have to pay two popularity to list one recruit. I think not. I don't want to lose popularity at this stage. So I think I'm going to go pay two gold for four metal. So Tom, if you wouldn't mind moving that encounter cart off the screen. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I'm going to pay two coin. One and... Come on, two, which gains four metal. That takes four nicely laid arranged ones from up here. And then move them down there where the encounter is. Oh, I've zoomed out quite a way now. Let's come back in a bit up here. So let's see which space that is. There we go. And that's my encounter done. So I'm all done. Fantastic. Okay, well, I think I'm going to take a move back. Uh, so, I'm going to move my hero into the leg. Nice. And it just really so to see you can stay put sorry i'm just chatting away to myself that's okay no that's nice uh, people want to hear what what you're thinking that's fine i'm just gonna adjust my microphone a bit it's dropping down which isn't good uh, here we go that's a bit better sorry for making noises right so you moved your hero and what you're moving your mech now yeah i'm thinking about it um hmm. probably gonna move my mech oh dear me <laughs> oh no mech falling over <laughs> onto the factory cars and then you taking the workers with you or leaving them? Yeah, I think I'm going to move that the worker. Said. Okay. Well, I it's, it's a frustration because I kind of want to leave it there, but also kind of don't. So um, I'm going to move the worker off the factory card. Okay. And take my resources with me if I can shuffle them about. Yeah, that's that done. Nice. And... Uh, so that's my move done, and then for my second reaction, I'm going to expend two oil for mm -hmm. another upgrade. So let's put those off the boards, and yeah, do a upgrade action. So yeah, that's <laughs> you're running out of tokens now. <laughs> yeah, well, this is it. Just, uh, it's quite hard to see. I think white was a terrible choice because it blends into the backdrop, so they're yeah. quite easily. <laughs> I think it's a bit hard to see, depending on the space they're on as well. So yeah, it's fine. 
It's a nice faction um, though. I think I'm going to upgrade my bolster action and yeah, pop that down there and to make my mechs a bit cheaper. Okay, and I'll give you power. So, yeah, and I'll grab my coin and then we're all done. So Polenia is getting more and more powerful on there. Very nice. Okay, so, so yeah, over to you. So I think what I'm going to do is do another um, trade action, pay a coin, which means points lost, which gives me two oil. In this case, I'm going to buy two oil. But I'm going to spend the two oil to do another upgrade. So I think, Tom, if you help yourself to another power. And the reason I'm doing that is to make my mechs cheaper. So I've got four metal now, um, but they cost me three metal at the moment. But if I do an upgrade, I can make them cheaper, just two metal, which is nice. I just need to decide, do I want power, popularity? I might actually go for popularity to switch things up a little bit. And then put the cube in there and I'm done. Rightio. So I'm going to jump across and spend the gold to take a bolster action. So nice. It cost me one gold. So um, Tom is going for the star for the full power. Oh, Maybe. Seems, yeah, it seems a bit rude <laughs> not to really. So it yeah. takes me up to 14. And then as a secondary, I'm going to spend two metal. So if I take those off, oh dear. So I, you got it. Cool. So pop those over there. And that will deploy me another mech. So I'm going to deploy my speed mech, I think. I'll give you four coins, shall I? Yeah, yes, that'd be grand. Thank you. So here's a three. And there is a one, which I plonked really badly, but there we go. Oh, there we go. Okay. And uh, yep, yeah, you done my coin, so that'll be yep. me all done in which case. Cool. So speed mech out. It's looking good. So now. I want to get my mechs out as well, so what I have to do, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but I'm going to pay a coin to do a bolster action. So Tom, do you mind moving me up to power? No, yeah, of course. And then I'm going to use two of the metal that I got from the counter. That one, Ooh, if I can click it, that one and that one. Shove it off the side of the screen. Over there, say, there we go, that's all the rubbish over there. And then, oh, moved into the wrong screen again, up there, we want to see. So I spent two metal, which allows me to deploy a mech. So I don't know whether you enlisted your mech thing yet, but it gives me two coins, which I'll take in a okay. minute. One. Yeah, I think I get a coin from that as well, so I'll sort myself out. Okay, and then I'm going for, I'm just going to see what my river walk is. I can't kind of remember off the top of my head. So I can move to wood or metal. So if I move down there again, um, hmm, maybe not worth it. So I will take the artillery mech instead because then combat is quite useful for me, or at least not as dangerous. So the question is, I'm probably going to put that on the tunnel space there. And that's me done. Okie dokie. Right. Yeah, if anyone's watching this after the event, I'm going to put it on YouTube as well. Or if you watch it on Twitch once it's finished, um, please let us know what you think. As I say, we're getting used to Tabletopia. You can probably play this game a lot more quickly, but um, it's just a nice way of playing these sort of games. We've previously done Yakuta streams, which are a bit easier. because just click things and things happen. So we played Mystic Veil vale and Terra Mystica. But we thought we'd try Tabletopia because it is a nice environment and we've we're planning to play Clans of Caledonia next week, so that's Monday, the 27th of April, again at 11 
a.m. UK time, British Standard Time. So feel free to join us. If you do want to play with us, I think Tom will be on the next stream as well. So um, you can play against Tom and me. Just send me a message. Find me either on Twitch, obviously, or if you go over to Twitter, where more often it's uh, Tabletop Games, the bl, bl, or just search Tabletop Games blog, or go to the website, which is on screen, tabletopgamesblog.com. You'll find links there as well. So yeah, be nice if you want to join us. Clans of Caledonia, I think it's up to four players. So we'd have at least two spaces left if you do want to join us. And it'll be again, live stream to Twitch and played on Tabletopia. So Tom has done some movements as far as I can tell. Yes, I didn't want to drop everything on the board and cause terrible chaos. Um, so I've got the double move of my hero and mechs now. So I've moved my hero from his lake to this one. Yeah. And then the second move will be into your hero's territory. Yeah, I thought you might. Okay. And this mech has moved across too as well. So um, it's attacking as well. Don't, did we resolve combat after all you the You do all your done, movements, or? yep. Yep. So. Okay. I'm going to be attacked. Mm. So I'm going to get, yes. get my hand out. So with combat, you can let's move that up to there just to choose one of your combat cards. Little... Sorry, I've gone. Yeah. So um, yeah, I've just moved my last worker onto the factory just to make him a bit safer. So yeah, so now we can try the combat. I'm not too sure how this is going to work, but yes. let's give it a go. So yeah. let me sort of quickly run through it. I've got these two combat cards. I'm not going to tell Tom what they are, even though if you wanted to look on Twitch, you could see it. So I, for every plastic figure, basically, so either one of your mechs or your hero figures, you can play a combat card. And then added to that, you can dial in some power. And I'll show that in a minute. But basically, the power we see down here you can dial in up to seven hence it's circled there so i've got 10 power at the moment tom has got 14 so he could easily afford to pay 10 power sorry seven power just for that and still be quite high up i don't know whether he would want to because he's heading for the star so we'll see i've got 10 power so i could again dial in seven if i wanted to and then play this card to get a fair amount but tom can play two combat cards because he's got two characters in there so if i look at my board up there we both got these dice can i zoom into this a bit more might be a bit easier so i'm not going to see what tom's doing but we both got this eight-sided dice lying here so we can't use number eight we can dial anything between zero and seven so i see what we yeah so what we have to do is because there's no zero on here we basically have to subtract one so tom if you dial a one in it means zero if you dial an eight into your die it's a seven okay okay because i said there is no zero on the die unfortunately on, and on your power dial in the real game you could dial in zero and play a combat card if you wanted to so i now have to think do i want hmm. so i think i'm going for if i can get it i'm going for that one which oh no hang on I just saw on the die. So if you dial in an eight, apparently it turns to zero. <laughs> oh. So I need to change that. So one to seven is as is, eight is a zero. But you'll see it on screen, basically, what you've got. And then I'm going to draw this card, um, flip it around, face down, and put it on the table here. There we go. So I'm I'm dialed in. Actually, I'm I'm going to do it visibly so you guys can see. So I've dialed in that number on the dice, which is upside down. Let me see if I can rotate that. Actually, rotate is down here, 180 degrees. So you can see that number there, that number there. So that's my total power. So when Tom's ready, let me yep, know. I am. Okay, so we would now at the same time reveal. So I'll let Tom know. So I've dialed a seven into my power dial and I've played a combat card of five. So I've got a total of 12. I'm gonna zoom down to him now and, and see uh, if we can... Hopefully this will work. Oh, sorry, I've just dragged your oh. card. Apologies. I oh. meant to zoom into That's the... That's all right. I've been both pre-selected ready for flipping, <laughs> but we can do it, so. So it's two fours and a five. So that's 
13. So he wins the combat. Um, so do you want to be in charge of cleaning the cards away? And I can, uh... Yeah, let me just see. Um, now, I've forgotten about my artillery mech, of course, but we're not going to change that now. <laughs> Because I could have spent well, have one, reading? I could have spent one power to remove your power dial down by two. You could have still afforded, you know, what you afforded, so you would have still won the combat. Um, um, okay. But I didn't do that, and that's fine. Um, so if we tidy things up, so I'm going to drag those. Okay, do that. There we go. Drag that up there. And then I need to remove my hero as well. Oop, let's drag them in the wrong place. Come on, cards. A bit temperamental. There we go, that's a lock. And then my card goes on there as well. And then if Sorry, you... I realised I've been moving. My, I've moved my windmill. Just... Oh, okay. Because <laughs> they look like workers. Yeah. So Easy. I dialed in seven powers. I have to remove my power down to a three. And Tom, how much did you spend? Uh, I spent five. Five. So I've so... moved it down to nine. Are well, you doing it? Okay. Yeah. Sorry. And then. I need to get my hero back home. Oh, that's not my hero. That's your hero. So you've already done it, haven't mm -hmm. you? I, I've already moved your hero yeah. back to your. Okay, cool. There we are. Um, I realised earlier that I put my star on the combat chart right. Oh yeah. And, uh, <laughs> so I'm I'm going to correct that and uh, assume that. The, the objective so, yeah. earlier, yeah. So and I was watching you do it as well. Think. I think that's just all done, isn't it? I think maybe. Um, I'll need to discard my other cards. I've uh, done done discard your cards. Um, the only thing is, oh, I thought I've done it. Oh, they're still down there. You may have only done one, but I don't know. That's okay, worrying. I was just one down there. Apologies. Yeah, I thought I'd wreck them both up there. Um, the only thing I can't remember: does someone draw a combat card? If they've at oh, least. Oh yes. So do I yeah, draw I think one the as a loser? Draws yeah. a combat card, don't as you? long as you've uh, yeah. spent at least one power, whether that's dialing in or through a card, so that's going to be quite beneficial, I think. If I can drag it into my hand, please, Deotopia. Hmm. It doesn't seem to. So how do you get it into my hand? Is that an easy way? Uh, I think you just right-click and draw, don't you? Is that right? Oh, no, I'm rotating now, which wasn't good. Oh, oh, gosh. Let's reset that to the original camera angle. I'm a bit struggling with this. Why is my hand not responding? Can I drag it onto there? No. Normally just drag it to the bottom of the screen. Maybe it's because it's hidden. Let me just do that. Do apologize for this riveting streaming. <laughs> Trying to get the cards into your hand. Oh, that was better. That happened. There we go. Right. Okay, so you've done your movement. Do you uh, yeah, want I'll to do a secondary? Right, I can. I don't know if I've got the resources for a secondary, actually. So you've got I lots of metal now. Let's, let's put it that way. <laughs> yeah, yeah lots of that. Uh, no, I'm, I think I'm all done, actually. So it's over to you. Lovely. Thank you very much. Um, so two stars there for Tom. So that changes the situation a little bit. So I can't get another mech out. I could do another upgrade. Which makes the mechs cheaper. Spending lots of coins though. Production. I was going to do production at some point. Um, so let's do that then. Let's get to the production out of the way. So I can produce on three hexes. One will be definitely a worker over there. The other one will be a metal and then a wood. 
which are over here. So wood is there, goes to this worker, and a metal is somewhere over there, goes there. And that's all I can do. I don't have any food to do anything secondary. So Tom, it's all yours. Right. I'm going to take a bolster action, so that costs me a gold. Um, I'll do the power for free you. Power. Oh, you can do it, yeah. yeah, yeah. Where I've done it. Um, and then I can spend two metal, which yeah. I shall do. Shall I do it and you grab the Mac? Yeah, that's right. That's, do you um, want them both from that space? Yeah. Yeah, just pay, they, they take them both off that square, it's fine. Oh. I'm dragging the screen now, apologies. And so. I shall pop this mech over here. Let's see. And so building a mech gets me four gold. So take one of those and put one of those down there. Uh, do you get mech bonuses as well for no, in your enlisting? I don't think I do. No, I've only enlisted the enlisted chap. Okay, and uh, that's me all done, in which case, so over to you again. Okay, so... I'm just going to see what I've got. I've got the workers there. I've got two wood. So I need to move. And I'm going, I've got three movements. And I've got the speed mech. So I could move two spaces if I wanted to. But I do want to have. Yeah. Why not? I want a metal there. So one, two would move those over there. Okay, so I'm going to move one worker there and then the other worker down here. That's two movements. And then I think it's time for my little Bjorn to come out and I'm going to drop him there. So that's my three movements. And then I have two wood to build another building. So I'll take these two wood from the woodlands over there with the mech. If I can grab them, chuck them off the screen over there. Oh, no, not drag the screen. Yeah, I find that a little bit fiddly at the moment. Maybe it's because I'm a bit zoomed out too far. There we go. And then I can build my second building for some bonus points. So I'm going to place it next to that tunnel. And I've got a worker there. I just need to decide what I want to get. So the armory would give me a boost. And then if I'm zooming there, we've got the monument, which gives me popularity. Hmm. I might just get the windmill out, but then I would have to put it on a metal space. Hmm. OK, now I'm going to get the armory out and plonk it down there and I get two coins as well so I've done the buildy action I don't know what Tom gets for that and uh, nothing as of yet unfortunately. okay so I'm just grabbing my two coins and I'm done over to you okay well, I'm gonna pop over and take a move action and okay right hope for the best basically yeah. <laughs> see what we can do <laughs> so uh, okay, that's the board is really filling up now. Take these actually. So, two of those mech and a worker are going to move down there. Okay, and uh, that guy can stay. Hmm. Let's move this worker over to there. Mm -hmm. Is there anything on that square that I need to take with me? Nope. Oh, hang on, there's a food um, there. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, you've got to, got to be careful with the colours sometimes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, then... Oh, let's take a worker and a mech. Um, I keep forgetting I've got double moves, actually, as well. So yeah. So he's going to move here and then over to here to the encounter. That makes sense. So let's get rid of that. So is that your third movement done? Yeah. Uh, that will be yes. Okay. So, so you can do your encounter. Encounter card. 
and see what we've got. Do you want to grab, yeah, drop it there with it and I'll uh, make it bigger for the viewers. Okay, what have we got here? Uh, looks like a village festival of some kind, but I could get to enjoy an afternoon of festival with the commoners to gain some kind of money and popularity, uh, enter a battle of wits and lose on purpose, which costs me some money, but gets me some power and popularity. Nice, yeah. Or I can drink too much and raid the storehouse, <laughs> <laughs> which is uh, free popularity to gain any five resources, um, which I think is a bit steep at this point in the game. Yeah. So I'm going to choose the first two options. So I'm going to gain two gold, but then pay, pay two gold. Yeah. So I'm just going to gain two power and three popularity in total. Okay, so shall I do the you... power? Yeah, if that's all right. And did I say it was? Three popularity, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, three popularity, which uh, two one, power. Two puts me up into the next tier, which is... Uh, yeah, he's good. overtaking me now. Just, and I'm going to get rid of the encounter card as well. There we go. So yeah, if you have a look over um, here, he's just gone to the next level, so you get more points for the various things at the end of the game. But annoyingly, uh, that didn't. I was hoping to get resources out of that as well, actually, um, because I don't have enough to do my secondary, unfortunately. So oh, okay. But, so that would be me passing in which case, and on to you. Okay. Yeah, but three... turns definitely feel like they're speeding up now. I think they are definitely are. I think generally in the game they tend to, but it's yeah, it's nice that it's happening here as well. So um, I've already forgotten what I was going to do. Um, so I can do another upgrade, which I think I was going to do. That's right. So I'm going to do another trade, pay a coin to get two oil, which I will not take. But we'll also get a power, which I'll do in a minute. So I'm going to spend the two all I just bought to do another upgrade. So Tom, you probably get a bonus for your upgrade. I do believe I do. Let me just jump down. Sorry. I'd kind of try and get into the habit of using the time in between your turn and mine to, to tidy, kind of tidy the board yeah. up. Yeah. So I'm just going to make, says, my, yeah. make my mechs cheaper and increase my bolster power, basically. So I've done that. I don't get the bonus. The only thing I do get, um, as I said, is um, whoop, where have I scrolled to there? I get one power, which isn't much, but it's a little. And I'm done. Fantastic. Right. So So Tom's got four stars left. I've got all my six still. <laughs> it's not looking good for me. But I still love playing the Nordics. I just love the river walk. You've liked them since we first started playing as well, didn't you? I think you yeah. really got into them really early on. Yeah. I think they're more fun when the Rosviads are on play because you can really annoy them by walking your, <laughs> your workers into their territory almost, or at least outside the territory. So you get um, another star. Yeah, so yeah taking a star. bolster action, so I've paid my gold. So, I'll move your star yeah. up, if that's okay. Yeah, of course, thank you. So, and then I'm going to spend another two metal. Uh, that's a star up here to go for the full power. Just to deploy another mech, so... Um, so that's to go with a worker. Yeah. Kind of, so pop them up there. Nice. So four mechs out. Okay. So that's another star. Yeah, I can. I'll be the honest. Okay. Um, nice. So two more stars for Tom, and the game is over. It's not looking good for me at all. Anyway, did you have a secondary? So that was the mech building. So you got your four coins. Uh, I haven't. I was just about to grab those actually. Okay. So. Coins are looking good. I haven't got much money either. Coins are basically the points at the end multiplied by various, well, not multiplied, but you know, add to the popularity multiplied by things and all that. But anyway, we'll come to that towards the end of the game. And over to you. Okay. Can I catch up with anything? I need two more buildings out. I need two more mechs out. I need two more upgrades. So it's all looking very dreadful for me. I have one metal though, which is good. So if I do my bolster action, spend my coin, 
uh, which I'll probably get back in a minute, uh, which gives me three additional three additional power, Tom, if you wouldn't mind doing that. Yeah, of course, that takes you up to seven. And then I can spend this single metal, which I still have, which is lucky, to get another mech out. And I think I will go for the Seaworthy. Plonk it with this, uh, which worker? Actually, let's go for that worker. So I de I'm deploying a mech, Tom, so you get probably a coin. And I get two uh, coins yeah. for that. I basically net gained one coin and three power and a mech, which isn't bad. And that's me done. Okay, right. Let's have a look. So we can see lots of mechs and things around here. Little a Nordic worker there on the mountain going, hey, 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 come and get mm -hmm. me. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to take a move action. Um, so that's three moves for you. Right, let's try and work out double move as well. If you do yeah, with mech, say... mech or the hero, and you can drop workers off and pick them up on the way as well, which is nice. Right, so. I'm moving into that lake and then over to the factory. Oop, dear me. Oh dear, a drunk mech. It's not looking good. Yeah. <laughs> it's fine, we know where it is. It's fine. And then I'm going to move this mech with two workers across that lake over oh, to that square. Okay. To get this guy to pull it down and yeah. get him upright. Yeah, so it's, did you say it's just rotating makes it upright again? Yeah, if you just go to rotate any amount and it just that flips them up, right? Uh, okay. Um, a little tip for people using tabletop, yeah. Um, and let's push my luck a little bit and oh, move into here. Oh, here we go. Why or why? So you would lose one popularity if you won this battle because there's a work end there, or have you? No, you got oh, your. Well, I don't because I've no, got camera. No, yeah. So, very nice. So, is that all your movements done? Uh, yep, that's every move. So, so yeah, now move... we have to do the points, don't we? Yeah, so I'm going to move up to my... Actually, I'm going to check... Before you do anything, Tom, let me just check how much power I've got. So, I've got seven, so I could dial in the full seven if I wanted to. And I've got a couple of combat cards. So, let's zoom into my power dice there. And let's see what cards we've got. So we've got these two cards. So I think I'll choose that one. I put it face up down there so people can see. Now, Tom, remind me, you've got one mech in there or two? Uh, what was that, sorry? In that hex, have you moved in one mech or am I fighting two mechs? Yeah, just the one mech, just so mech. I can so, only apply one card. So it might be all right if I do it that way. Um, yeah, so I'm done. Are you chosen? Yep, I'm all set. So my power total is 10. I've dialed in 7, so I'm going to lose 7 power, whatever happens. What about you? What have you dialed in? Let's I right. dialed in 7 on my dice. And have we flipped the cards yet? Or Yeah, yeah it's including doing the flipping. So mine's 10 in total. Ooh. So what was yours? 10 as well. So I can't remember. Is it the... Attack our defender in <laughs> size. I'm just going to remove the power first of all. Both of us put seven in, so I go down to zero. Tom goes you, to nine. For some reason, I feel it goes in the favor of the defender. Let me have a quick look there in the rules. Yeah. Uh, where's the combat section? So while it does that, I'm just going to do a quick tidy up. I'm going to move the cards onto the discard pile, the combat cards. And then we'll find out. We should probably know these things. Well, these are sort of little edge cases that you don't come across very often. And my combat card. And again, I forgot about my um, military, oh, sorry, artillery mech. Tides go to the attacking player. Yeah, this is size after all. So you lose one popularity if you would do the honors. And I'm going to move all uh, my stuff. I don't stuff. because of camera. Oh, yeah, I keep forgetting oh, yeah. that. Gosh. 
So I'm going to move my worker away as well. So at the moment this hex is controlled by Tom, but if he moved out it would go back to me because I've got a building in there. So that is... I'm just putting my, ex yeah. putting my extra star down on the second combat encounter. So Tom's got one star left. I think I know who's winning this game. <laughs> Put your bets on. No, a bit late now. It's a bit too late. You had your chance. Right, so that's your movement done. Can you do anything else? Oh, I might be able to actually. Uh, have I got... No, I still don't have enough oil actually to do any upgrading. So now I'm done. Okay. So moving back up to me. So I've done that to get one more mech out but I've now got no metal it's not looking very good my production phase would give me metal which is nice um, and one would hmm. so what I might do instead it's probably not the best way of doing it well actually yeah I'm going to do that I'm going to do another trade it's quite expensive it's not the best way forward but there we go spend one coin to get two oil which i'll use in a minute and i'll get one power so tom if you would power on the chart at the bottom yeah and then i'm going to do an upgrade action so spending those two oils i just bought to do another upgrade to make things cheaper again so i'm going to do the movement slash coins up there to give, give you some more money so one upgrade away to get a star out my first star <laughs> and tom do you get anything for me upgrading? Uh, yeah i gained a power for that which i've done okay and that's your go then so can you finish it off this go do you need a couple more i can indeed yes. yeah there was a reason with the moving the mech so i'm going to take a production action uh, so which gonna... will get my last three workers out okay i'm going to move your power down one not that it matters too much but we'll yeah. do it anyway so my work is deployed and that will get me the last star. Star, yeah. Let's have a look up there. There they are, game over. But Tom still finishes his go. Um so that's workers I've got. Do I have triple production? Yeah, I do. Yeah, so, so the windmill definitely produces. I don't know whether you want to do well, I guess we need to do that because it the resources, two resources yeah. make one point yeah, as well. Or points several at the points. End, isn't it? Yep. Um, I don't, don't know where my other, blood, my other workers are. Um, there's so one over got there, isn't there? Food there on the left near yeah. your home territory, so you can produce six food in there if you wanted to. No, no, sorry, that's uh, that's uh, the actual food resource, not the tile icon. If that makes sense. Oh yeah, so that's, that's yeah. okay. That's where you got the workers from. Apologies. Yeah. Uh, so I'll just. Um, so zoom in and have a look i think i'll just get a barrel of oil over there i think i can only get uh and a metal as well so you produced in the village do your workers and then you get two more production plus the windmill so you've done the windmill so you get a metal if you want it and an oil. yeah i might as well take it right let's drag these both over just plonk them somewhere yeah doesn't really. Oh, so that would need to. Yeah, Wait, that need so, to so that goes there. Left, yeah. uh, that would be up there. That's it. And uh, let's have a look. You could spend production. two food for another enlist, but don't know then, yeah, I don't think dangerous. I actually have the um, second food. So I'm all done in which case. That means game over. That's it. I don't get another go. It is what it is. So we should probably start counting and. I think what's probably a good idea is if we do my points first, which would be very miserable. So I'm going to use this counter here, which is our victory point counter, which is currently zero. And when you oh, when you click on it, left click on it, I think you get how was it? No, right click on it. You can then uh, add and remove points if you wanted to. And I've just zoomed out, which wasn't the idea. Let's move on, zoom back in. So. First of all, you get one point for every coin you've got. So I've got eight coins there. So that is plus eight. Let's 
That's a quicker way. I thought there was a quicker way of doing this. Ah, yeah. So if you double click it. Okay, so eight points there. Then you get points based on these charts. So for the number of stars, depending on what tier you're in. So I would be in the bottom tier. So I would get three points for each star that's out. So it's zero for me. Then I get two points for each hex that I control. That's not looking good there either. So we got one hiding over there. We got one there. That's two, three, four hexes. The home territory doesn't count and this building doesn't count either because it's not controlled by me. So it's eight points for that. I don't know, Tom, are you counting up as well at the same time? or? Yeah, I'm trying my best to. Okay. <laughs> then we can compare. So I get eight. So I'll do that'll be 16. And then I get one point for every two resources I've got. Now, I don't think I've got really any resources left. Let's have a look. No, nothing. So that's zero. And I and then obviously the uh, building, well the end game bonus here for the number of buildings that are adjacent. So for one building you get two points, for two buildings you get four points, and so on. And I've got two buildings, if I'm not mistaken, adjacent to each other. And in that case, it doesn't matter whether Tom's mech is in there. It's just the adjacency. So I get another four points. This is looking very miserable, I must say. It's probably the worst game ever for me. So it's a grand total of 20 points for me. <laughs> is this the worst Three, score ever? Four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, oh, sorry. Um, did you say there was a way to make the dial jump up more than 12 at a time? Or? So if you double click on it, it goes really big. Oh yeah. And then you can uh, add tens or hundreds. And then you can click out oh, again. Fantastic. Yeah. So already Thomas at fifty four. I don't think it's looking good. Wow. This is gonna be the highest scoring game, I think. Not for me, for Tom. Oh, actually sorry, I've I've overshot the mark a little bit actually. Uh, okay. I think I gave myself eight points too many, so take those off um but then i've got my resources to factor in so two for every two isn't it i've got one two yep. three four five six seven eight so four so it's another eight also oh, that does actually take it so back did, up to yeah 86 oh. oh rotating it that's fine yeah I... <laughs> you're right shall right. i do it oh, you got it. yeah got okay it. uh so i think that's everything added up in which case so 86 to 20 what a disaster but there we go <laughs> this was scythe on tabletopia just going to zoom out show the board overview and all the resources scattered around there um yeah so what did you think tom uh yeah i actually quite enjoyed that more than not that i wasn't expecting it to be fun but i was a bit worried about the lack of well yeah kind of having to move everything around yourself but it actually feels a lot more like playing a board game than say yakata does yeah because it's not automated and you have to do your own bookkeeping so yeah, i find it it kind of keeps you engaged a bit more no i agree and i think if you can sort of share the re responsibilities so you know as you're moving your resources i move another account or something i think that helps as well and yeah, getting used to the interface, being able to pick up several things. And I think my problem was I had I was zoomed out a fair bit so people can see things a bit more in an overview, but that meant everything was a lot smaller for me to select. So if you zoom in a bit more, you can obviously select things more easily and drag things around. So it's it's getting used to that interface. But no, I, I agree. I think it's it gave you that feel of sitting in front of a board and, and playing a real game with yeah real i mean it, it even had the classic side thing of you know wanting a bigger map because when you're shuffling lots of tokens around it's, yeah. <laughs> uh, it does get quite crowded so it's kind of you know, pretty much you know, a good uh, representative of that as well yeah yeah um, and it, yeah, yeah, no, that was good fun. Yeah, the dynamics, as you say, were well, like concise. So you start very slow, do little bits and pieces, and then the game sort of speeds up and turns speed up as well as you get used to your strategy and, and things. So I think, yeah, it came across really well. Really enjoyed that.
how, how long did it take? Do you know? I don't know if you kept track of time at all. Well, it's but... one o'clock now. So we started at about 11. So we nearly played two hours, which I think for two player size game is quite comparable. So to, you know, sitting in, in front of people for, with a real board game. So it's, I think it's okay. It's maybe a little bit slower. What do you think? Yeah, I've, I reckon like having played through now, now what we know, I, I reckon we could probably knock 20 minutes off that easily, I reckon, yeah. just being quicker about it. So I think an like hour and a half is kind of all right for Scythe. You know, yeah. It's, yeah, two player as well. Uh, overlapping turns would help, but, you know, it's a bit harder to keep track of stuff, I think. But if you were kind of talking through what you're doing and overlapped your turns as well, that would easily knock more time off as well. I think... Is, yeah then we would have definitely overlapped turns a bit more and been able to push on a bit more quickly but Ooh, you're still there you've gone quiet have i gone quiet can you hear me oh i can see that discord has i uh, think disconnected me just give me two seconds i'm going to change my settings so we're doing the right, voice I'm disconnected for a moment right let's see can i bring my volume down no i don't seem to be recording on discord let me just disconnect and go back in. I mean, we're nearly done anyway. It's just Tom can't hear me now. So if I go into there, back into there, it's connecting now. We'll see. No, no root. I think Discord is a bit unhappy for some bizarre reason. Reconnecting. The internet seems to be there. So, but yeah, let me just wrap this up then. And say thank you very much uh, for yeah joining us in this game. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope the audio was good and the video wasn't too bad. Um, I'm just going to message Tom so he's, he knows what, what I'm still around. And um, yeah, thanks very much for watching. As I say, let us know if you watched this, what you thought, whether you thought that worked. And as I say, next week on the 27th of April at 11 a.m. UK time, British Standard Time, British Summer uh, Time rather. We'll be doing Clans of Caledonia with Tom and I again and you're more than welcome to join. Go to tabletopgamesblog.com to find out what, uh, yeah, what, uh, what, how to reach me like on Twitter and things like that. And we'll see you then. Thanks very much again and um, yeah, check out the links obviously on my blog as well to my Twitter stuff and if you want to support me financially, I've I have to say this, I guess. Check out the links to my Patreon and Kofi pages. I do appreciate all your support. And I definitely appreciate there for my Patreon supporters. So thanks very much and I'll see you next week. Bye.